Hybristophilia, the sexual attraction to people who've committed some of the most gruesome and despicable crimes imaginable. Also known as Bonnie and Clyde Syndrome, while I'm sure the condition existed in some form in the past, the cases of it recorded in recent decades have truly been host to some of the most peculiar obsessions out there, ranging from something as passive as sending love letters to criminals to even committing crimes in the names of them. Though I'm sure you may know these people by a different name, as with quite a few congregating on Tumblr, let us dive into the absolutely bizarre and sometimes disturbing world of groups like the Columbiners. Hello everyone, this is the RPG Monger, and welcome to The Fandom Files, the inconsistently released series where I take you into the dark shadows of each and every fandom. But before we talk about the actual serial killer fandoms themselves, I feel it's also necessary to talk about the larger group they've associated themselves with. The true crime community. You see, the true crime community is quite the tricky fandom to tackle considering how many little subgroups make up the community. And while a part of the true crime community does consist of people who idolize criminals, there's also another portion that's the exact opposite. Instead of being interested in the criminals for delusional reasons, these people are actually more focused on the criminological side of things. And at least in terms of myself, I can relate to them pretty strongly. I mean seriously, I don't know about you all, but there's been a couple of times where out of sheer morbid curiosity, I found myself diving into full documentaries about how serial killers ended up the way they did, and why they even committed their crimes in the first place. If anything, I wouldn't be surprised if these kinds of people weren't the first members of the true crime community. As much like those said documentaries, really all they do is present facts about the criminals, and that's it. Unfortunately for them though, as time's gone on, the true crime community hasn't become notorious for its criminological sides and informative members, it's become infamous for its absolutely obsessed side, which at least on Tumblr absolutely thrived. And while there are quite a few little groups within the fandom, each devoted to idolizing a specific criminal, I feel we should first dive into the history behind Hybristophiliacs, since while they've definitely been brought into the spotlight through the internet, they're by no means something that just popped out of thin air. Take the situation surrounding Ted Bundy, a serial killer who from 1974 to 1978 gruesomely killed at least 36 young women across the country. Well, when he was finally caught in 1979, the public was quite surprised to see how the monster capable of doing such heinous acts didn't look the part at all. Not only was he well educated, the guy didn't look mentally ill in the slightest. Well, in turn, while Bundy was in jail awaiting his trial, women from all over the world began sending him fan mail. If you didn't know the circumstances prior, you would have almost thought he was the lead singer of a famous band, since among the typical things you'd expect to find in fan mail, the killer was receiving not just one, but multiple marriage proposals. Some women became so obsessed that they'd show up to his court hearings dressed like his victims. So let's stop there for a bit. You see, there are two types of hybristophilia. Passive hybristophilia and aggressive hybristophilia. Passive hybristophilia can be categorized as the girls from earlier who'd send fan mail to Bundy and even show up to court dressed as his victims. They may not have the desire to take part in criminal activity, yet they're also very delusional at the same time trying to give excuses for what the criminal did, no matter how despicable. Though then, there's aggressive hybristophilia who instead of having rescue fantasies are attracted more to the criminal agenda of the criminal rather than the criminal themselves. Due to this, aggressive hybristophiliacs are more than willing to help their lovers out in their pursuits. Of course, regardless of the case, aggressive or passive, these relationships never have a happy ending and usually turn out to be very unhealthy. But back on Ted Bundy, while his bizarre fanbase showed countless examples of passive hybristophilia, it also be host to one of the most infamous cases of the aggressive side of the spectrum, Carol Ann Boone. You see, while she was quite similar to the other devotees of Bundy, she took things a step further through not only aiding his 1977 prison escape, but also marrying him too, all while he was still in jail. And the strangest thing is, this isn't even that uncommon of an occurrence either. While Ted Bundy may perhaps be the most notable of them all, a good bunch of other equally despicable 
possible criminals like him have experienced similar things. But now that we've gone over some cases of hyperstophilia before the conception of the internet, have things really changed that much at all with the modern day equivalents found in the true crime community? Well, yes and no. On one hand, there's no denying the fact that throughout the fandom, there are still people who idolize and humanize some of the worst criminals solely due to the fact that they have above average looks, completely disrespecting many victims of said criminals in the process. But at the same time, it's not like they're just left to run rampant in the fandom. Remember how I said a good portion of the true crime community consists of people and blogs who are more focused on the criminology surrounding criminals than anything else? Well, more often than not, these people will band together and actively discourage those who romanticize murderers. Of course, they still exist, and I came across quite a few while making this video, but out of all the little groups within this community, there's one specific group that I really have to talk about for a bit, and judging that you've come this far into the video, I'm sure you've been expecting me to, the Columbiners. As you see, much like the entire true crime community itself, the Columbiner section of it isn't so clear-cut either. Unlike how a lot of people portray them, a good bunch of them are surprisingly very respectful towards everyone involved in the tragedy, rather than just gushing about the looks of the two boys who caused it. Though, to be fair, there are quite a few people like that there too. Though unlike the other groups within the true crime community, there's one specific aspect of the Columbiner side of the spectrum that I have to take note of. You see, while this isn't always the case, a good chunk of the fandom is more on the younger side of the spectrum, with a lot of them being teenagers. And though most of the time they're just interested in the criminology and psychology behind the two killers who caused the tragedy, there will be a select few every now and then who happen to become inspired to commit similar actions to the killers, usually since they're suffering from the same mental illnesses like depression that they did. This is where the community aspect of the true crime community really comes into play, because though I must admit that there do exist twisted people within it that actually encourage feelings like these, the vast majority are quick to aid anyone who may be even as much as contemplating murder or even suicide. Hell, just from doing a bit of light research on the matter, there are countless testimonials out there from people who were actually saved solely by those specific people within the fandom that rushed to talk them out of doing anything rash, which at least in my opinion is honestly pretty great. So at the end of the day, from everything I've seen about this fandom on Tumblr, it really isn't as bad as I thought it would be going into it. I mean, oddly enough, when observing all the blogs dedicated to idolizing killers for their looks, it actually reminded me most of the K-pop fandom with its blogs dedicated to the certain members of certain groups. Of course, they aren't romanticizing killers in the K-pop fandom, but the types of fan art and posts that come out of the two are really quite similar. All in all, the true crime community is for sure the most mixed bag out of all mixed bags. On one hand, the community can be great for learning about the criminology behind a lot of the most gruesome tragedies of the modern era, but at the same time, the little fandoms within it dedicated to each specific tragedy and killer can really be not only disgusting to look at, but also really disrespectful in the way they handle the tragedy and its victims. Because in all honesty, if anything, I'd actually consider the true crime community and its specific criminal fandoms to be completely separate entities. While they do mingle with each other, I feel it'd be far more accurate to associate the criminological aspects with the true crime community and the hybristophiliacs with the true crime fandoms. So really, in all honesty, when dealing with the aforementioned hybristophiliacs within this community, as peculiar as they may be, more often than not, they're usually just angsty teenagers going through a phase, and though their phase may be pretty strange, it's also equally harmless. Though wait, before you go on to the next video in your recommended section, I have some news regarding the series you're watching right now. You see, while you may not be aware, this video is actually the 11th episode of the second season of The Fandom Files. And as part of tradition, that means the next episode I make will be the season 2 finale. Last time on season 1, the finale ended up being the long-awaited Fandom Files on Undertale, a video that while not flawless, is still 
one of my favorites to this day. And well, to put it simply, I plan to top that video by a long shot for the next season finale I'm working on, but to do that takes time. So as a result, the Phantom Files will be taking a bit of a hiatus until the next finale is ready. Because in all honesty, this is probably one of the most requested videos I've ever had in the lifetime of my entire channel. Needless to say, I'm gonna be stuck at home for a while, making sure it's perfect, and believe me, it will be. Until then, enjoy all the other videos I have in store for you all. Thanks for sticking with me. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, do subscribe, and today's cool thing of the day is Stardew Valley. Because I mean really, after spending hours upon hours researching serial killers and the absolutely off-putting blogs dedicated to their well, physical features. What's a better way to clear your head than playing a relaxing game like Stardew Valley? I mean, hell, it worked for me. I recently got another copy of the game so I could play it on my Switch, and honestly, it was the best and worst decision I've ever made. Since while I was addicted to the PC version last summer, the Switch version has taken over my life for the past few days. Honestly, if you just want a downright enjoyable game, get Stardew Valley. I know you'll enjoy it. So that being said, I'm the RPG Monger, and don't forget that each and every one of you are fantastic.